Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're gonna to talk about six different types of campfires and what situations you would use them in. Let's get to it. Good oh boy. So before we get started here, I wanna say that there's one campfire that is very useful that you don't see here, and that's a Dakota fire hole. That was used to conceal fire. You get a nice controlled burn. That's a really good low profile option if you don't want to draw attention to yourself. Now the reason why I don't do it here is because the ground is frozen and it would be a hell to dig. Now there are other ways to do it using stones, and it's really good because it burns clean it can be smokeless if you do it right. It's the same idea as a rocket stove. Basically, you dig a hole, on one end is your fire, and the fire is fed by oxygen coming in from the hole. So, pretty simple concept. Now, if you're in a winter environment like this, and you're trying to make a fire, I would recommend putting some spruce boughs, or pine boughs, or just needle leaf, whatever, underneath, just as a platform because if you don't do that, the moisture from the ground is gonna keep putting your fire out. So that's what I've done for most of these. Some don't require it, like the pyramid fire that you see here. But anyways, this is the first fire I wanna talk about. It's the teepee fire. It's the most intuitive fire. You have a teepee design with the bigger sticks on the outside, the smaller little sticks on the inside, and the kindling right in the middle. It's one of the easiest to set up. The only downside is that it doesn't burn that long. If you have soft ground, what I would recommend doing is sticking your main columns, if you will, into the ground a little bit, and that'll just give them some support so you don't have to lean it all up onto itself. Now, up next is the Canadian candle, also known as the Swedish fire torch. There's a war going on for who invented it first. I guess the Swedes have been around longer as a country, so they probably did but I'm sure this is something which is done all around the world. Basically all you do is you, you need a big log for this. So this takes a bit more labor, not too much labor, but it's definitely gonna be a bit of work. Obviously you're gonna have to have a saw big enough to cut a log this size, or you could do it smaller. Uh, one of the benefits of something like this is once it gets going, you can put your frying pan or you could boil your water right on top of it. It is a bit more of a challenge to get going. It really depends on the dryness of your wood and how much prep work you put into it. I have a string of paracord wrapped around there. I would recommend a wire because then you could reuse the wire. Obviously the paracord is gonna burn, but this will burn for a fairly long period of time. It's the most efficient way to use the energy that's contained within the wood for the purpose of cooking. Obviously it's not gonna generate a whole lot of warmth. The BTUs that a fire throws off are finite. So, you know, if you're cut dicing this all up and putting in a teepee, it's gonna burn really fast, but it's gonna burn a lot hotter. It's gonna keep you warmer. Obviously with this design, it's not gonna burn as hot, but it's going to burn a lot longer. Now we're not gonna be doing anything fancy today with respect to how we light the fire. We're just gonna use a match because it's cold out and I got things to do. I wanna show you guys this real quick. This is called a pocket bellows. It's basically just an old antenna, which is uh, telescoping, and you can blow into the parts of the fire that need oxygen. So this might come in handy for today. I got a little extra bir birch bark scattered around here just in case uh, I need it, because I always tend to need more birch bark when it comes to lighting fires like this one. Basically want to make sure that the fire can get oxygen. It's all about oxygen. This has a top-down component to it. Obviously you start at the top, it works its way down. Oh, that's nice. Now I've also wedged a stick in between these two and like that. That's just to keep the spread so oxygen can come through the sides. So up next is one of my personal favorites, and it's the Top Down Fire. It's another low maintenance fire, takes a bit of setup. One of the great things about this fire is that you don't need to be messing around under the bottom like you do with the teepee, you know, to try to get the, the kindling lit underneath. You just throw a spark right on top. 
it'll light up and it'll slowly burn its way down to the bottom. Uh, the other benefit of this is that if you have a very wet platform like we have here with the snow, you don't need a spruce bow. Uh, by the time the fire reaches the bottom, it's going to be burning so strong that you're not going to have to worry about it being extinguished by the snow. I would say it's relatively easy to set up, a little bit easier than the Swedish fire torch. The layering of this is really important. It's kind of like a system of gears. Like if the, the next gear down isn't the right size, it's not going to catch. So you really got to be precise when you're layering the sticks. You want them to be just slightly bigger in diameter than the logs underneath. Now up next is the log cabin fire. This is more of a novelty fire. It's certainly not something you would probably be doing in a survival situation unless you had an abundance of wood and time on your hands, which you probably wouldn't. Now, if you have a lot of nice straight sticks that you've cut, it's not gonna be a problem to make this fire. But of course, you know, there's a bit of symmetry which is required with your the wood that you use in order to make this. Now you can do the same thing with twigs. Basically, you're just layering the logs perpendicular to each other. You can also combine this with the pyramid style to make this into a top-down fire also. Basically, to do that, you would have bigger logs on the bottom and you would progressively get smaller as you go to the top, kind of like what we did with the pyramid fire, the top-down fire method over here. This fire is relatively easy to light because on top, you have a hole where you put your kindling and your tinder and it slowly heats up uh, the rest of it. It's gonna create a nice, sizable, clean burning, symmetrical fire, but unfortunately, it's not gonna last that long. Up next is the star fire method. So basically, you have your teepee fire in the middle and you have these big logs radiating outwards from the center. When the fire starts to die down, you simply push the logs in towards the center. And so it's an easy fire to maintain for long periods of time. Not gonna throw off a lot of heat, but it's going to allow you to have a fire that's gonna burn for a long period of time. But I'm gonna do another video of just long lasting fires in the future because it's a pain in the butt to be waking up every hour uh, to make sure the fire is going. And the fire in a winter situation is something you probably wanna keep going uh, just in case. You know, it could get really cold, it could start to snow, and it could be very challenging in those conditions to rebuild the fire from scratch again. The last one I'm gonna show you is a lean-to fire. And this is great if it's windy out and you need a fire in a pinch. So you have one uh, side of it, which is one or two logs or a big log. Uh, it should be a log, which is eventually gonna be able to catch on fire. Really simple, you're just getting some kindling. You're basically leaning it up against the larger logs and uh, you tuck some tinder underneath there, you light her up and you're good to go. This is by far one of the easiest uh, fires to make in a pinch. Now, when I light the fire, I'm gonna be removing some of these just so I can get the fire going. I don't wanna smother the fire. So I just put this here for demo purposes. This is what ultimately it would, it would look like. In winter time, however, you're gonna need a dry platform. So I have some spruce bough underneath there and like I say, this is a, a probably the best type of survival fire you can get. This acts as a bit of a heat reflector for a short period of time anyways. In future videos, I wanna talk about wind and heat reflection and just the physics of fire in general, but we'll save that for a future video. Well, there you have it. 
All the fires seem to be burning quite well. It's kind of hard to tend to all of them, but uh, the star fire is going good. Cabin fire is roaring. The lean-to fire is going out. So I better get to tending to that. TP fire, self-sustaining. This one, even though it's smoldering, if I just blow on it, it comes right back to life. Top-down fire is doing what it's supposed to do. It's going to take a long time to get to the bottom, and that's what we want. So, awesome. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER, all one word in all caps. Have a Merry Christmas, enjoy the time you have with your family, but stay ready.